What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Shutter Talk. We are back here. Uh, I missed an episode two weeks ago because I couldn't find a guest uh, because everyone seems like they're really busy around these times. Um, But today we do have another guest. We have Mike. I'm I'm sorry, I'm probably going to butcher your name. Sherling. (laughs) Is that right? Yeah, sure. That's right. Sherling, there exactly you go. Right, yeah. I'm I'm just really bad, really bad at English. Like I got 68 it's, and stuff, but it's German, so it is German. Right. Oh, that's cool. My my, silent, my last right. name is Brule, which is actually my mum is French, but it's actually not. It's my dad's last name, which is so weird. Um, really, and your dad's not French. My dad's not French. My dad's Canadian. My mum is French. Her last name is Le Petit. Um, but for some reason, my dad's name just sounds super French, so I don't really know what's going on there. Yeah, um, it works. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, we do have him on the podcast today. He is a photographer, a filmmaker, videographer. I don't even know these terms. We just kind of throw them around <laughs> nowadays. Uh, but uh, if you want to quickly just introduce yourself, I'd love to hear a little backstory um, about you know where you grew up, uh, what kind of kid were you maybe when you were younger, <laughs> things like that. Um, yeah, go, I'll pass it off to you. All right, uh, my name is Mike. I've been doing uh, photo and video for probably five years plus now. Uh, mainly video lately. Yeah, uh, I've I seen that. I grew up in BC, actually. I was born there. Oh. Moved here when I was five. Beautiful. So I've been here forever. My family's there, so I get to visit. BC is amazing, dude. It's amazing. <laughs> where did you? Where running. Where exactly in BC did you? Were you born? I was born in Prince George. Okay, I've never been Which there. is kind of in the middle of BC. Yeah, and I, then, uh, I have family in, in Vancouver, so I've only been there. And I don't yeah. know if Vancouver is like a full representation of BC, because most people, when they think of BC, I feel like they think of Vancouver. Um, yeah, Vancouver was awesome. It was a big city. Yeah, uh, My mom's in Victoria, okay. and my brother lives in Terrace, which is like northern BC. I'm and sure it's all it's great, like, though. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> I've never been to Ontario. <laughs> no offense to Ontario. But. <laughs> Ontario is okay. It's On- fine. Yeah, we're but all right. It's just not the... Having picturesque landscapes everywhere you look is like, especially especially like did that ever did that inspire you to to was that kind of like a reason why you came into like this whole creative you know creating things or was was that not related that you were always seeing these you know picturesque no, places? No, it's not related. I just I think I have a creative personality. Okay. I always want to be creating something, yeah. or doing something like that. Yeah. Well, I find that though a lot of people from BC are like there's a lot of photographers in BC just because it's so like accessible to like just like yeah. take really sick photos um it's also. easier yeah but easier you can't, exactly you can't not get a good photo exactly like honestly like anytime anyone goes to bc i'm like and they, they go with an iphone i'm like what the heck like i gotta step up my <laughs> my, my game here but oh, yeah, yeah no what kind of what kind of kid were you when you were younger i'm sure like you're what four 39 39 now 39 yeah so you're like almost just about 40 just about 40, 40 in january 40 in january i'm 20 in December. So you're almost yeah. exactly 20 years older than me. <laughs> You've could lived be your twice, dad. twice the lifetimes of me. So you're very wise, wise man. I hope. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. But yeah, no, what uh, I was a good kid. Yeah. I was uh, well behaved for the most part. Well, well behaved. Got in my like, share of trouble, but I think I was an overall good kid. You do good, good my school and stuff. <laughs> your mom says. Uh, I did good in school until they told me I didn't have to go, and I'm like, forget it, goodbye. I don't need this. Really? Now. So your parents told you you didn't have to go to, like, was that post-secondary? No. Uh, so I went to grade, up to grade 12, I was, you know, smart kid, yeah. did well. Classic. But then uh, once, like, grade 13 hits, that doesn't exist anymore. They had they, that? Uh, that was a thing? Yeah, they had their, But it was kind of, like, half optional. So they would, some teachers would be like, I don't care if you don't come to class. And I'd be like, okay, goodbye. <laughs> but, and I'd just go do my own thing, right? So Yeah, respect. What did I you do? Was kinda my, what did you do during your, that time then? Uh, I was just working. I worked a lot. What, what when type, I was younger, what type? I saw more value in working than going to like religion class. So, are you religious or was it just no, like? I wouldn't say I'm religious at all, but like I saw that class is like pointless, and I'm like, why? If I don't have to go here and I can go do something. Oh, that was a forced else. class. It wasn't forced. It was just I went to a Catholic school. Oh, okay. Not by like any for any reason yeah, other than yeah, it was a closest yeah. school. Yeah, I've heard that, but it just wasn't for me. So okay. Well, that's cool. And then when, when did you, you said six years ago you got into photo. So what were you doing before this whole thing as a, so, as a job? For a long time, I've been in the restaurant industry, restaurant, bars, events. Uh, I've been a DJ or was a DJ for like 20 years yeah, as well. Let's go. Creative, creative. So <laughs> I produce music, I DJ like every single week. You know, I helped run events and that must be crazy. Eh? Is that like every night when you're a DJ? Like, do you have to go every single night and, or is it no, only no, like weekends? Once a week. Okay. Once a week. 
But the atmosphere. I, I usually have a residency. Be... I DJ at a bar, and then you know Saturday nights is my thing, kind of whatever. That's fun. That's a fun thing to do. It was cool. <laughs> yeah, I kind of yeah. So you just hopped around, kind of doing random things. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't. A nine to five job was not yeah. for me oh, 100%. ever. I could see that, especially like if if you're telling me you were a DJ before you were a filmmaker, then you've been you've been not you've been in the game. You know what the the whole creative industry is like and the mental. Yeah, Problems, <laughs> not mental problems, but you know the struggles you can you can have. Oh, uh, it's yeah. But then uh, full time now, it's it's wild, right? It's, it's such a different. Yeah. You see people and you hear them talk about the mental game, and you're like, "That's not going to be me." And you're like, "Oh my god, it's me." <laughs> you don't understand. It's look, I find one thing with it all is like, it's always easy at the start because you you're you've been thinking of these ideas for so long, you know. But once you run through that first like column of ideas, so you're like, oh, I want to be a photographer. I'm going to go shoot at, you know, I've had ideas for photos for Vancouver, landscape photos, whatever, whatever. And then you start doing all those photos and you don't want to just start like repeating the same thing over and over again. You kind of want to yeah, stay I, creative and like finding those new ideas is what really holds people back. Um, yeah. Ideas are more valuable than anything. Yeah. Ideas are more valuable than like the camera you have, like exactly. the crew you work with. 100%. Like it's the most valuable thing. Well, that's where that's, everything comes from. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, and some of the mental blocks you get are when you don't have an idea and you're like, "Well, I'm useless." You yeah. know, like you just feel. And then you just start uh, like, uh, it's 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 so hard to explain sometimes, but like it's just like once you're in it, you'll understand and and people will believe it. That's the thing is like people can't, yeah. People can't be like, oh yeah, like that's not gonna happen to me. Uh, it'll happen to you. Like, <laughs> if yes. you don't if you don't believe it or not, it's gonna happen at one point. Just I'll let you I'll let you figure that out. Um, See, I think to my benefit, uh, my girlfriend's full-time photography as well, and I saw her go through it, you know, and I'm, you know, you're supporting objectively on the outside and I'm like, I I still don't understand it. But now that I see it and based on the, what she went through, I'm like, I a hundred percent. Was she, did she start before you? Yeah. So she was doing photography before I was doing any kind of photography. She's been a full-time photographer for the longest time now. And then she kind of got me into it. Like she yeah. kind of showed me the ropes. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good to have that kind of like. Did she? I guess, I guess she was kind of like. I guess you could say your mentor, even though it was a different ish industry. Because she does. Oh, does she I do video? S- she doesn't do video. She had done it like in uh, her program in school in the past. Yeah. But not at the same level that I'm doing it now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And uh, yeah, she. But she, the fundamentals are still there, and she showed me all those things. Hundred percent. A lot of it goes back and forth, especially because it's like it's kind of the same like you know color grading and, and editing a photo is is similar like you have similar tools and things like that even yeah, though same it, basic rules it, apply exactly exactly so so that's actually good to have that i've really for me it was me and my friend he started and then like i started like right because he was starting i don't know i was just i guess peer pressure or following the leader <laughs> <laughs> something to do too so we were just kind of figuring out as we go we had no one really to to show us the row so that's really cool but so five years ago five plus years ago you got into it why do you think you got into it was it your girlfriend do you think that pushed you or well there's a couple things so uh i started making behind the scenes so i started photography with her okay. for weddings um the first wedding we shot, she's like, here's one of my cameras. You can help me today. Good luck. <laughs> but I had it in auto and she's like, no, you need to shoot in manual mode. And I'm like, I don't know how to do this. And she's like, just, you'll be fine. And she, so we shot the whole wedding. She didn't need me. Like it was a one person wedding, but yeah, I volunteered. Yeah. And uh, at the end of it, after looking at all my photos, she didn't use one. Not not one photo I took all day. Because I just messed everything up. Hey, like, wrong ISO. And- honestly, respect, though. Because she, she's teaching you kind of by... Like, there, I'm sure there was some stress along with it. So she kind of taught you by just, like, throwing you into the fire. Which can be a good way to learn. Um, oh, I, I don't think I would have learned voluntarily. I think I might have just, like, stuck with auto. Kept the easy exactly. route, you know? <laughs> just and now... Auto to me is like the craziest thing. I'm like, why would you ever? Hundred percent. The only like, when do I shoot auto? Like, I don't even, like. I remember I used to argue about using aperture priority for photos. So, I do use aperture priority for certain things. Yeah, for certain things I think it's good, but for now, like for manual, sometimes it can be annoying though because like you forget you put it in manual and and you think you're on aperture priority. I don't even know, and then oh, like yeah, the yeah. photos underexposed. But yeah, no, it is good to learn manual. Um, and and that is cool that she she just threw you in. What a good teacher. Tell her, tell her good job. <laughs> yeah, no, she, was, she was great. And then on the flip side, too, while she, she was showing me, she worked at Henry's. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I tried to get a job there. I could get one. <laughs> so I could borrow 
or she could borrow whatever she wanted every night, like Ooh. off shift kind of thing. Yeah. So I started getting her to like give me every single camera. <sighs> so I was like messing around with all the gear. I'd hang out in the store. Damn. You know, so I had this opportunity where I could try all these different things yeah. to figure out what would work for me. And it was a, like, you know, thinking back, like those you know, resources, the resources were there that not a lot of people had. Yeah. A lot of the first like real videos I made, I borrowed equipment. I didn't own it at all. I just mm-hmm. bought it for the night, shot my thing, returned it in the morning. That's a huge advantage. Honestly. Oh my God, it's huge. <laughs> and then that's yeah, crazy. Just, <laughs> well, it was funny because my next question was going to be, uh, after five years, what do you, what are some habits, resources, and strategies do you think that have, have helped you the most to get to where you are? And I guess maybe that could have been one, the access to all that gear. <laughs> that was definitely a plus. Yeah. You, you still need to learn the fundamentals, right? Yeah, 100%. So, where do you learn those? Good. I learn YouTube all the time. Yeah. YouTube is my like number one by far source. Like I, I have my C200. I've had it for a year and a half, let's say. I watch tutorials on it all the time. Like I watched a tutorial like a couple weeks ago. You know what I mean? Because there might be something I don't yeah, know. Yeah, 100%. And half the time I discover something, I'm like, oh my God, I'm doing it wrong for a whole year. <laughs> I you know, it worked for me, yeah. but it could have been better. Yeah. So YouTube, like hands down. Yeah. Any, any habits you think? Like, I guess just always learning would be one. Um, always, yeah, always learning. Sh- always shooting. I, yeah, I feel like you can never know enough. Yeah, always shooting is a huge one too. Like, if I'm not shooting for a client, I'm shooting for me. Yeah. How often do you, think, do you think you're oh, shooting? I shoot uh, at least three times a week. <laughs> I, shot, I shot five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> three times a week. Even So, like, even if there's no projects going on, you kind of just go out. What, do, what kind of stuff do you shoot? You just go random uh, creative ideas. I, yeah, sometimes I'll get up like super early in the morning and I'm like I'll just go shoot stuff. Yeah, and a lot of times I'll go shoot stuff and it won't work. Oh, right, like I'll go shoot a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, this is garbage. I'm never going to use this. Yeah, people but I need learned to, something that time. Yeah, people need, definitely need to understand that they're like sometimes like even if you're shooting something and it's like the most useless thing in the world and you're like no one's going to watch this, no one's going to do this. Like it's the things you you learn um, that through through shooting and and repetition that uh, definitely help you out. Because I've been doing this absolutely. <sighs> two, two and a half years or whatever. And I remember my first video and, and not only one thing, the f- best part about shooting random stuff is looking back at it and then just being like either laughing at it or just remembering <laughs> the moment. Like my first video was, um, we had a car, an idea. Uh, my mom still doesn't approve. We had a car and <laughs> we, I think it was about three years ago now. And we attached, a. um, with a tubing, a tubing thing to the back of it. And then we towed each other in skis and it was like a first person GoPro video or whatever. <laughs> in like, the winter? Yeah, in the winter, like oh in Canada. God. And we had, we set up a little jump and I remember I was looking, I was like, oh, this is the worst video ever. No one's going to watch this and everything. <laughs> but now looking back at it, I was like, this is the funniest thing ever. And, and I learned stuff. I learned like how to manage GoPro footage in that video, you know, like how yeah. to deal with like frame rate. Like I remember I had, there was some choppy frame rates in the video and stuff like that. But, but yeah, no, just shoot randomly. hundred percent. Oh, out. I, that frame rate. I remember when I first shooting, I'm like, I have no idea what frame, like I have no clue. I'm like, I'll just wing it and see what happens. One, one, sometimes though, don't you find those problems that are like, just like, like you're in the middle of a project and a huge problem pops up and it takes you like hours to fix. Have you ever had that? Oh, every time. Yeah. Like I almost every single, not every single time, but yeah. more often than not, something will go completely awry yeah. and I'll be like, all right, this is going to be. De- so like I'm never going to do again. <laughs> yeah. So thank God I did it now. Yeah. It's so demotivating too. Sometimes like you're in the middle of a project or you're almost done. I remember I've had so many problems with exporting at the end of videos and I'm like, mm-hmm. I worked so hard on this and then now I'm exporting it and my colors are way too saturated or this, this, or this, that, that. Um, yeah. You, you learn what it looks like on the computer. Then what it's going to look like on Instagram. And it sometimes it's different and you even no but not even that like sometimes like i remember my old podcasts i used to have them and i exported them and they would export in log even though i color graded them i was like what the heck's going on what? but that's so weird you just have to yeah you see that's exactly it. it's like it's like what the, why is this happening but you just kind of have to push through and learn the things and then over time like the workflow just becomes so smooth because you've you you know every problem that could arise the solution or okay. how to avoid the problem completely and and it just comes from shooting 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 Every day. Exactly. And the more mistakes you make, the better and the faster you get at it. Cause then there's a million problems you already know how to solve. There's, there's people on don't understand, but there's nothing in life that there's a shortcut. It's just, all of it is just practice. <laughs> oh my God. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. That's, 
<laughs> everything just takes time. Everything, everything takes time. hundred percent. Like, and, and you have to also like realize that you are getting better. Something I put out yesterday was like, does, just think about yourself five years ago where you probably had just started shooting, right? Or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, I was using, so my first initial plan for doing video was to use my iPhone only and do like a million short projects, like go into like a business, do a quick video and mm-hmm. like take an hour, be done with it. Yeah. But immediately, like my first project, my battery died and I'm like, well, what, <laughs> like what am I going to do now? Yeah, like yeah. I shot for a couple hours straight with my iPhone <laughs> and I'm like this. <laughs> that's, that's uh, so and, creative though. You were hitting, not letting the gear limit you hitting with the iPhone. No, I, but it limited me the first day in my <laughs> yeah, brilliant idea. That is true. So I'm like, oh, okay, this sucks. Yeah. But then now you know, like now you know that. And, and the thing is, you have to look back. You're like, I was shooting on my iPhone. Now, five years later, I'm shooting like completely professional things. I saw your demo reel. I thought, who did you shoot with? Oh, never mind. I think that was someone else. But you've, you shot some crazy professional stuff. And, and then five years ago, what, you're shooting on your iPhone. So like people have to realize that it's this practice of five years that has got him to where he is today, that has gotten Mike to be the best videographer in Ottawa. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. Practice is my fundamental. <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay. So thought, so this is a, a debate that, that comes up and usually it's, it's very one-sided. Um, but it's funny cause we were just talking about iPhones and stuff, but like thought, uh, like being creative versus like your gear, how, what's like the percentage do you think goes towards like your gear? Do you think it's a hundred percent like how creative you are or is there still like 10% of gear that can limit you on, on, on how, how creative you are, if that makes sense. Yeah, I would say 90% creative because you could do, like some of my best videos I did was, were with my best gear that I've had. Yeah. Like some of my favorite videos are with my like older cameras and stuff I don't have anymore. And it's just because I had the, the right angle and the light was good and like my creative mind was going. And mm-hmm. a lot of the, my favorite shots are shots that I shot entirely by accident because I'm like, I just tried something. You know I mean, I'm like, I'll just try lying on the ground here for this. Yeah. And it's like, I'm like, this shot's awesome. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, and it had nothing to do with the gear. It would have been a great shot with my iPhone yeah. or with, you know, any camera, but so yeah, I think ninety percent creative, mm-hmm. and then sometimes you just need something. Yeah, like you couldn't. It's it's funny because I've had this argument, and I've had it like it's funny on TikTok and TikTok. Like I've had like these conversations where it goes down like like thirty replies of going back and forth, and I've heard arguments on both sides. I've heard arguments too that gear can't even limit you because people are like, oh, if it's too dark in a club or something like that, then you know. And I'm like, oh, and then people are like, oh, well, just like use the on-camera flash or something like that. Or like, yeah, yeah. oh, you need a, a, a um, what type of, a long lens or like a, sorry, a, a zoom lens to shoot wildlife. And then people are like, just run up to the wildlife and shoot <laughs> <up> from close. <laughs> so it's, a, it's interesting, yeah. but I definitely agree with you that most of it is in how creative you are. Cause people like to relate quality with like uh, camera quality. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, that's a quality video. It's shot in 4K. But like, like now you see film photos, people are like falling over these film photos and like, oh my God, film photos. But like film photos are like grainy, not very detailed, you know, not yeah. a lot of, not a lot of megapixels. So, so it's funny because like quality has nothing to do with actual resolution. It's more with how creative you are and how interesting the shot is to the eye. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Like, so I shot a wedding. I shoot a wedding with my friend, uh, Nikolai mm-hmm. and he has an R5 brand new, like, you know, flagship Canon camera. And I'm a C200, which is also like a high-end camera. Oh, both high-end. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if we're shooting both and we both have the same shot, I will always take the C200 footage, even though it's like 8-bit instead of 10-bit. Okay. Because I, I just like the look of it better. Okay. You know what I mean? And then that falls down to like, he has a better or a newer sensor that's shooting like a higher resolution, like more big pixels. But mm-hmm. there's something about how the C200 is put together. You know what I mean? That makes it look nicer to me. hundred percent. I love that point because that also like factors onto how like art can be so subjective. (laughs) So subjective. Subjective. Like even though like I have a friend who like all he cares about is resolution. He's like, oh, like, you know, I'm like, oh, if you want to get this tracking shot, you know, like a, like a head tracking shot in After Effects to look better, shoot in 60 frames. So there's more frames. So it doesn't get all blurry. And he's like, yeah, but then I'm not shooting in 4k. I'm like, yeah, okay. But like, it's just like, there's arguments with like how different things look and no one's ever going to like the same thing. You know, of course no. the majority, there can be a majority that likes certain things. Like, uh, I don't know, like huge artists who put songs out, majority of people like it, 
but it doesn't mean every yeah. single person in the world will like it. No, it's wild, yeah. Mm -hmm. My girlfriend and I have debates all the time for coloring or whatnot. <laughs> like, we're usually on the same page, but... Yeah. It's funny. It's that, even, that's actually another crying. question. Like, like one problem I find sometimes with, like, working with, with certain... Like, it can, it's not a problem, but, like, it can be really, like, mentally tough is when a client doesn't like something that you think is absolutely awesome. Like, oh my God. have you ever had, I'm sure you've had that. You're like, oh, this is like the sickest thing. And then sometimes that actually kind of can limit your creativity because you're like, oh, that client didn't like that. So, you know, I'm just wasting my time if I, if I do this on this That client. goes back to your point where it's so subjective. And if you have the understanding that they're probably not, like no one has the same eye as you, right? Mm -hmm. So if you give something to a client, they don't like it. You're like, okay, well, that's, if you know that's their opinion and you know that that's more than likely gonna happen when you send them the finals, then it, it's not so bad. Yeah. Because you know, you didn't do it wrong. You just like it better, mm -hmm. right? So I'm, that was one of the biggest hurdles. I, I used to get like offended. I'm like, it's great. Oh, like, I, I don't still understand. Get offended <laughs> but, but now I'm like, I know it's yeah. an inevitability and some people just do it to flex, right? They just want to oh, be yeah, definitely. in charge. So like, oh, maybe you could change the song. You're like, okay. Because you're not going to win. Yeah. If you keep it, they're going to be dissatisfied. Oh. So you just change it. Yeah. Even though you know you nailed it, you know it's great, yeah. and you know everybody will love it, you're like, okay, yeah. I'll change it. Yeah. That's, it's not for me, it's for you. That, that could be like, a problem with the creative industry, though. Is like Sometimes people will start getting limited creative, like Because of past experiences, they would have been limited creative. I, don't know, I can't even sometimes say I the say word. No. I can't even say the word. <laughs> sometimes I refuse. Like You refer to change, change it back? If, if I know it's working and I know it's working amazingly and they want me to change it, I'll, I'll nicely be like, no, it absolutely works. Yeah. I do not recommend changing it at all. And I'll be very firm about it. Yeah. I've actually, and most times they're like, okay. I've heard people actually put that in their contracts that they have final say because they're the creators, which I think can be something important. I have it in my contract. Yeah, you have that in your contract. Yeah, it can be technically important because like you're the person creating the thing. Um, yeah, there's give and take. Some people just are ridiculous. It's just the nature of human beings. Yeah, so. then it just becomes like a kind of like a client problem, you know, where like it's just not a good relationship to have, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but you, you got the C200, which is huge. And I think we talked about this briefly through DMs about how you're, it was like a very stressful moment for you. Because oh my God, it's so it's, stressful. How expensive is that? Did you say 40K? 10K? I don't know. Uh, I think I bought it with a lens and like an extra battery and it was like 11k or something that's still a lot of money man that's like i financed it i didn't have like 11 000 yeah 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 i'm sure you financed it but still having those bills to just put on top you know it can be crazy oh my gosh um but i'd love to hear the process about you know how you you went to buying that camera the stresses around it and if you'd recommend it and when you would when you would recommend it for people to do that not if but like i'm sure there's a time when people should do that so I was a Sony shooter okay. and I had gotten a really good deal through Henry's to get Sony equipment. And I love the Sony. It was small. It was did great, you work at Henry's by the way? Or is that only your girlfriend? I didn't. Just my girlfriend. Okay. And I know a lot of people that work there because of her. But uh, I was shooting with it and I had enough clients. I was making money, doing whatever. And I, I was enjoying it. But I'm like, oh, I need to like, I was at the point where I'm like, I can't do it full time. And I don't want to keep doing like smaller projects all the time. Like yeah. I, I was in limbo. So I had reached out to Canon and their customer service was like through the roof. I'm like, I'm considering buying this. Can you maybe just tell me what it's gonna cost? Whatever, whatever. They're like, no problem. We'll send you a C200. We'll send you the lenses. We'll send you a 5D Mark IV with lenses and you could test out for a whole week. Ooh, I'm like, maybe I just gotta like that, buy like, just, <laughs> like Just like that. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and like the next, like a day later, I had a C200 at my house. And a 5D Mark IV to test with all batteries, everything, with CFast oh cards. My like, God, man, that's the customer crazy. service was like, I was like, okay. And I tried it and like, it's just trying it for like that one week. I'm like, oh my God. Like, oh, they got you, bro. They got you. <laughs> they got, it's just something about it. It looks so different. But did you struggle with the settings and stuff? Cause you've never used that camera, right? So you had a week. Well, that was to one of the out. panic things. Yeah. Like, I get it. And I'm like, I don't know how to shoot in raw. Like, the files are insane. <sighs> like, how do I do? Like, I'm like, oh my God. And like the fundamentals are still there, right? So you know the oh, fundamentals. Yeah. And to be honest, it's a little easier than using like my USR to shoot. I'd rather use the C200 all day because I know it now. Yeah, well, you know it now. I'm sure and it wasn't it's easy. It's obviously better, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah. I'd have days where I'm like, what the, f I'd look at it and I'd be super excited, but I'd be like, what the fuck am I gonna do with this? <laughs> $10,000 like my problem is the file size because like a C200 would add so much to your storage like the amount of money you have to spend on storage unless you have unlimited cloud storage then then you should be fine oh no 
Uh, so the only time <laughs> the storage kills you is when you shoot in raw. <laughs> okay, and but to be honest, I don't shoot in raw very often because it's like yeah, it it doesn't translate to YouTube or, or to Instagram stuff like that yeah. really, and there's a lot to work with. So I usually shoot in just 4K. Yeah, but when I do shoot in raw, it's <laughs> so for 128 gigs you get 13 minutes of footage. <laughs> God, right so if you shoot a, like a real project over an hour you're like at a terabyte with project files and all that stuff mm-hmm. and then if you shoot 30 projects a year that's 30 terabytes of storage you need <laughs> plus your computer i had to buy a new computer oh definitely <laughs> when you get so, a new camera you have to buy a new computer i i pushed my old desktop for the longest time when i got my usr i was like come on baby you can you can hold these 4k <laughs> files you can keep going i don't want to spend the money but finally like, during covid i, I cracked and, and bought a, a 4k computer because it was about time but yeah no do you i find the 1080 footage on the r is almost just as good as the 4k footage on the r that's one thing i figured out and Again, with you, it's like you have to choose when you choose what resolution you're shooting. I've been shooting yeah. four. I was shooting 4K at the start, um, and because I, I was like, oh, I love that little YouTube icon on 4K on the bottom, <laughs> you know, things like that. Yeah, yeah. But it looks the exact same. It's actually insane how good the ten, to the 10 1080 it's crazy. Could be. And even, even then, th- if you export, if you shoot 1080, edit in 4K, and then export at 4K, like it'll it will barely lose any compression. Yeah, when we shoot weddings with my guy, I'm like, don't shoot in 4K. I'm like, shoot in 1080 with his R5. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, it's fantastic. Yeah, and then it's uncropped like, too, so. And I always edit in 1080p anyways. I don't ever edit in 4K. Yeah, well, one thing I used to do, I, I used to do a lot of proxies with my old computer, which was a, kind of an annoying thing to do, but do you, can you do that with the 4K, with the raw footage? Do you, do you have to? You can, I haven't done it. I don't even. Your computer can handle 4K raw? <laughs> or yeah. is it, damn. <laughs> I bought a I bought a you bought a machine yeah I bought just for this I'm like okay I'm going all in this guy got a star destroyer in this freaking house but now apparently the new Max like the new IMAX like the M1 oh, whatever yeah. can okay. just destroy anything apparently you can handle any file that's like, like the, the big Mini. box one right no like the new 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 like last week they came out with the M1 chip oh okay so you can buy a $1200 Mac Mini and handle anything Damn, and, bro. and apparently it's like bulletproof. Apparently this new chip is like a revolution and it's good for video and photo anyways. Oh my God, man. Honestly, like this just technology is so accessible. It's like, obviously it's not, it's more accessible now um, yeah. with the things oh you God, can do. Lot. You know what I mean? Like, especially like with like how cheap computers are. Obviously they still break the bank. And, but like you wouldn't have seen like 18 year old, 19 year olds getting into photography. Like, no. you know, when you were, I don't know when you were 18 like 20 years ago would people wild yeah yeah it's crazy did they i don't even think they had digital when did digital come out i don't know do you know I don't even know. do you know, I don't know. <laughs> okay um i feel ha- like i had a camera that was one megapixel or 10 megapixels or something have you ever shot on Something's film ridiculous. actually or- yeah well my mom had a film camera so when i was younger shot on film Fil- i shot on film and it can be fun but it can be expensive as well <laughs> well yeah it's, i think back then though too you could develop film for nothing oh compared to now now you have to go to a special place yeah there's only a few places that do it yeah i've, I've seen people like they have to get like that little tube thing and then you you put the film in yeah, shit. yeah. i'm not i'm not trying to do a science experiment in my house right now <laughs> we were gonna set up a dark room in here in our house but like That's, just the investment and the space yeah. and, oh, forget the, it. the thing is like it's not a very asked for thing like you have some people doing it but most people just want like really high quality nowadays oh yeah you know what i mean like it, it's yeah. it's more of a like kind of a trend thing. Like you know, you like you post a film photo and people are like, oh, I'm giving it's hundred percent. But it's not oh, gonna yeah. it's not gonna return. It's, there's gonna be no ROI. We have like boxes of film cameras down here. Yeah. Just because same back, go back to Henry's, they had an e-way spin, and people film camera garbage. <laughs> I think we have like a hundred cameras. That's film cameras. Oh, that's and sick. Because I I, we don't, I got my film camera from like a really old guy <laughs> but he was super nice and, and we just i don't use them sometimes i use the old candid lenses i adapted them to use on the c200 and stuff like that just to see but it's cool but they're just really quirky and yeah only the specific purpose and i've debated doing that i've seen a lot of videos people are like oh get this lens kit get a full cine lens kit for a hundred dollars but it's like all manual f- old film lenses on an adapter and i'm like this seems- like they're cool and i do like using them but like i would never grab them first yeah 
if I'm doing client work, no one's ever been like, hey, do you have old film lenses? I'm like, no. It's a very specific situation. And then the thing is those situations usually, like if you're going to a shoot and let's say it's a shoot where you can do something all manual, like a talking head shot interview, or I don't even know. But then like yeah. usually you need autofocus or something for, for, for extra. Yeah, it would be a very specific purpose. Yeah. Um, okay, so with COVID and stuff, because of course we would like to touch on that um, because that's kind yeah. of a thing right now. <laughs> Uh, how has you how how has it been? I can't even speak today. How has it been with uh, COVID? Business slowed down. I guess maybe it has, or has there actually been more opportunity because people are starting hobbies? I've had more opportunity, to be honest. Really, I've had a few people that needed video because they couldn't have people go to the place, or they were doing online class or point. in class classes, mm -hmm. and they needed to get like you know I've, content made. Yeah, I've actually seen that a lot, and the thing is like. It's not only just businesses. A lot of people like are starting hobbies nowadays. Um, yeah. Photography, videography. I don't even know. Let's say you have a garden plant. And for me, at least, because I do some tutorial stuff online, I've seen yeah. like a small increase in views um, because, you know, people have nothing better to do than learn how to shoot YouTube videos or start a personal brand or something along those lines. Oh my God, yeah, they're shifting. It, everyone needs to show what they're doing now because they can't like go out and meet and create. There's no networking. Yeah, it's like, it's weird. It's like that, there's certain ones that I feel like were hit, like portrait photography, like, cause like, like if it, if it goes directly to a person who's not running a business where it affects, like if it's a leisure reason mm. you're hiring the services, then I think that's where the business is dropping. But if, when it's something like a business or, oh, I need online videos for my business or whatever, that's people, you know, like Uber yeah. Eats, like people need ads for Uber Eats because everyone has Uber Eats or photos. Well, yeah, to put if you have two things, one has a video and one doesn't, you're probably gonna pick the video one. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Even if it's not as good, it just kind of gives that air of, they put more money into it, obviously the product's better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Um, what's my, so you told me that it's important to get both the right shot and also getting the creative shots, which I think I 100% agree with you. How do you think yeah. you develop that eye to know um, when to get the, the creative, uh, sorry, how to get, where to get the creative shots? And then also, what do you think the balance is of getting creative to important shots? Like, do you always go for the important shots first? And then once you know yeah. you have extra time or do you kind of just throw it in wherever? And just like you're, you're kind of you're, you're like that videographer that runs around. You're like, oh, I see something over here. Let me run over here. That's me, 100. <laughs> percent Really? <laughs> uh, I always do the shots that matter first. Okay. Like I shoot what I need to shoot mm -hmm. always first, because you're there for a client and they need something, right? They need that shot. So usually, storyboard you communicate with your client, communicate with whoever you're doing it with, yep. and then I always have a shot list of what they need. Okay. And I usually do that first, and I'll get you know B-roll here and there, but main priority is getting what you need because you can build a video with that and then the rest is just like icing on the cake yeah when when did you start making a shot list and, and how do you think a shot list has helped you um, do you do it for every project uh yeah i do i do it and i usually go over the, with the client i usually have somebody who's like i'm like i need you to tell me what you need to be in the video like what that's elements good. you need that's really good Cause then they're like, okay, well we're shooting like a, a bread, like so I'm making bread that like I need the oven, I need this, this, this. And then it just gets me enough to know that I can push around those things. One good right, so some say it's bread making and then somebody needs the oven going in the bread going in the oven. Yeah. I know I'll need shots of like the temperature being turned up, like the door opening, yeah. like all the little details mm -hmm. of that. But I need that bread going in the oven first and foremost. Yeah. And that's very important too, because then like I've ran into situations where like people are like, oh, you didn't get this shot you didn't get this shot but you're like but all you didn't tell me to get that shot you know what i mean all the time yeah so if you do a shot list and you confirm with the client you can look back like you didn't tell me like it's not on this list yeah so too bad so sad like i would have loved to have done it but you didn't provide me with enough information even though i requested it yeah 100 percent. That, that's actually probably one of the top tips for for new people because one thing about being the creative industry is like nothing's really like black and white like you know when you're ordering a burger you get your burger you pay you know mm -hmm. it's like you order but then you have this whole service this whole process and then the final product is like you can't see what you're getting before you get it you can see examples but you don't know what exactly it's going to be like so being able to yeah. kind of like 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 mark down what they're looking for and and the whole process of going through it um 
can be very helpful to to guiding yeah. you instead of just being that wacko guy who just uh, walk up <laughs> unconfident be like uh, okay let's start with the shot of you here you know what i mean like you kind of like bang 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 and it saves time too yeah you need to communicate with your clients it's like one of the most important things mm-hmm. and you need to like the more you communicate with them the more you can just like freestyle it because you know what you like need you know what they want you know what they expect of you then you can do whatever you want because you're already getting <laughs> what they want just right start running around <laughs> just do whatever you want. i always run around how much how, how much do you, you do you end up using all the important shots do you find or do you sometimes, sometimes do you like leave them out because you're like oh, i like this creative shot more i'll leave them out like if i'm shooting something and i see a way better angle that i just kind of freestyle yeah as long as the message gets across no problem i'll use whatever i want yeah. like well you know and if the client asks me about like, this shot was better yeah and i don't usually entertain it too much i don't know you know because sometimes i'll take the shot they want and i'll ruin it or something you know i mean like i don't like it but i'm like I'll have a better angle of it and be like, oh, this is way better. It looks more creative than what <laughs> yeah. we discussed. Yeah. Oh, that's, 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 that's interesting. And then like to get the eye to get those creative shots is just time, you think? It's time, yeah. yeah. Like, is there, has there think, anything that helped you? Like, do you think along the way to, to, to do that or? I got a stupid, a stupid tip that. Is it, not, it, is it, it stupid? Dumb, that it, <laughs> it is. It's not, it's not stupid, okay? So <laughs> say you're taking a video. You always, in the beginning, you have your, your filming and you're filming your subject and you're just looking at them in the viewfinder, right? You're like, okay, I got it. I'm filming them. Okay. But the trick is to not look at them, like have them in the viewfinder, but then look at the viewfinder as a whole, like kind of pull back. Okay. Because then you can shift slightly, like use the rule of thirds. It's, I don't know if that makes sense. Right, so say you're filming- Maybe try uh, re-explaining it. I don't know if I caught it exactly. <laughs> say you're filming a runner and they're running okay. and you just have them in the viewfinder and you focus solely on them, just making sure that you can see them in the viewfinder. But if you look back and look at the screen as a whole, okay. so the framing where they are in the screen rather than just getting them in the shot, yeah. you can move a little bit. So say you're filming somebody running, but they're running in front of a garbage can, but you're not focused on the garbage can because you're looking at them. If you look at the whole thing, you're like, oh my God, there's a garbage can behind them. So you shift yeah. to one side and then they're still in the frame, but now you have like trees in the background instead of a garbage can. So kind of like focus, like focus on the whole perspective of the shot, less on the subject like people are yeah like, look watch the screen or watch the viewfinder like you're watching the movie rather than just getting them in the shot it's your own movie <laughs> yeah <laughs> no that's a good tip honestly because some people do get stuck in and the thing is too like one problem with like i think it's photographers more because the viewfinder like you could like, when you're shooting a video like does anyone ever shoot video through the viewfinder have you ever done that <laughs> i do i do all the time really like with your eye up yeah. to it because i do a lot of uh, handheld stuff so if I'm like at a bright sunny day, sometimes I can't really see the monitor, I'll pull it right up oh, to my okay. face yeah, yeah. and run. And then I get a different perspective yeah, yeah. and I get a better point of contact. Yeah. And sometimes it gives me just a different look and I'm like, oh, I kind of like this better. Yeah. I think one problem though with like the photographers is once they get like, like for photography, once you actually get the actual viewfinder up to your eye, you can't see anything around you. But then with video, you have the monitor that you can look at. So you can kind of like look up, look left, you know, like obviously look at the the composition, but you can also look around the room. Meanwhile, when you're taking photography pictures, like your your scope is like this big, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I was like doing this podcast with a photography thing, like I wouldn't see my (laughs) light or my, you know, my guitar over here or something like that. So you kind of just want to open up that perspective. I think if that's what you're trying to say. (laughs) Definitely, yeah. Um, So five years... Any newer creators you're seeing, newer, you know, whatever it is in, because I'm sure you have experience in the DJ industry, so you can say about this, but like general mistakes you think people are making, maybe you've made, maybe I'm making, call me out if, if, I'm, if you see me messing up. <laughs> <laughs> I, think you're, I think you're doing a pretty great job. I think a big mistake that people make that I don't do as much anymore is you finish editing your video and you're, like, you're so excited because you just finished it, like you just finished it and you post it. You gotta let it stew for a day. Cause sometimes I post things and I look back, I'm like, oh, I could have fixed that. Whereas if I finish it and then I leave and I post it maybe the next day or the day after, I'll look back at it and be like, my excitement goes down a little bit and I'm like, oh, okay, I can make this a little bit better. Right? Cause you might have spent like a week making it and it might have needed an extra day, but you're tired of it, you're ready to post it. It's a week, you're like you're super excited, you post it, but you could have had one more day. You could have just, like if it's not time sensitive, 
give it a day. I love that because there's, first of all, the thing you said about like looking back at it and you're like, oh, I could have done this better. I could have done this better. But also I find it's a problem like when you're editing and you like, I, I'm either something, you think something's really, really good or something's really, really bad. Go grab a coffee, whatever, wait 30 minutes, come back and you'll see it like completely different. And then also looking at the whole video is so different than looking at, you know, a clip. Oh yeah. Cause like, you gotta watch it the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Multiple times. Like it takes time, but like, you're like, oh, this transition's so sick. But then when you watch the whole video, you realize like how short that clip is or something like that. And then you're like, yeah, it doesn't I, make sense for the edit. Yeah. And then also like people, you have to realize people are not like watching the video the way you're watching it. Like when you're editing it, you're like, oh, going back and forth, back and forth. And you're playing the same clip over and over again. But then they're watching it fully through no time to go back and see something. So even if you leave like a super small detail and you're like, that's so good. You're like, most people will probably miss that detail. Yeah, let's just brush right over it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think that's really good. Just having like taking breaks, looking at it as breaks, a whole. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, taking that break before you post it. Honestly, I'm, <laughs> I'm guilty of this. I think I just oh, like I'd... to get things out <laughs> really fast. Sometimes I do it. Like sometimes I just do it and get it out. And I always look back. I'm like, I could have done I could have taken one more second, yeah. made it better. But then there's also like that, that whole thing where it's like, you're at that, there's a point where you're just kind of trying to get perfection or like yeah. every single detail to be perfect, which I don't think is possible because again, everything's subjective. So it's impossible. I think once you realize it's impossible to get perfect and good is better than perfect, then you can kind of move forward yeah. with your life and you can do like, <laughs> even if you think of things. it too, like is perfect is not even a thing. Cause I don't think like what in your life is perfect. Yeah. Nothing. Like nothing. There's nothing in your life that's perfect. It can always be better. It can always be worse. Like it's yeah, the, re the relentless pursuit of perfection. Even then, like things can be bad in your life, but like what is bad? Okay. Sorry. I'm trying to get, I'm getting into like, <laughs> yeah, no, you're getting deep. You know, if you don't have bad things, you don't know what good things are. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have bad, you don't have good. Or yeah, you'd, that makes sense. you'd have no perspective. <laughs> yeah, no, it's that, that's, that's more philosophy, but it does relate that like perfection is just, it's not even a real thing because for everyone, perfection is going to be different. And then also for everyone, perfection is not even real. You know what I mean? No. And yeah, it goes back to the subjective thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't want to, so I don't want to get too deep. I don't want to get too deep. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to get some, I guess, personal questions more about, you know, what you like to shoot. So what do you think is your favorite types of videos to shoot? Uh, for example, I don't know, weddings, interviews, uh, you know, you know, the whole gambit. And why do you think that's your, your favorite? Which one do you enjoy the most? I find it changes. Uh, like I might shoot something new and be super pumped about it, but I kind of like recently events or, <laughs> uh, events or live things. I kind of like to shoot because I get a little bit, I can be as creative as I want for the most part, as long as I get like the idea and the vibe of the day. Yeah. And then I find I can get a lot more shots so I can get more creative in the edit and I can like pick the music and I can get like the vibe of the day. And if I'm there for the event, I get the vibe and I can go back and listen to the right music and get the music to capture that vibe. And then, I don't know, it's, that's exciting to me. One thing I love about that too, about live events is that it's like real, like you're capturing real moments, right? compared yeah. to, uh, I don't know, a movie, uh, like a wedding. It's, it's kind of like a wedding. Like it's like a legit moment. It can be stressful because if you miss something, but at oh, the same so time, like everything, everything does the work for you. Cause you don't have any actors, you know, people are just being natural. Yeah. Especially if you're sneaky, like you said, you're a good sneaky guy that they oh, can yeah. sneak in to get the right shot. Right. I'm the best ninja. For Do you have any tips? Do you have any tips to stay sneaky? Because that can be a problem when someone, when you're shooting a live event and someone sees you, they'll act differently, which can 100%. ruin a shot. So yeah, long lenses are great for that. Okay. And a lot of times you just, I'll go right up to a person. I usually shoot uh, on a 35. It's my favorite thing to shoot with a C200. So it's like a 50. Okay. But you got to be close, right? To get the angles. Definitely. So you just go up and tell them right away. Be like, don't look at me at all. Like you just be super bold. Be like, don't look at me at all. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm just going to be right in your face. And they usually laugh. And then, and then you have the shot. Doing. <laughs> right. And then, or I'll go to a bunch of guys at a wedding. And I'll be like, hey guys, boisterous laughter. Like I don't even introduce myself. I'm just like boisterous laughter guys. And they love it. And they'll do it. And then you get this candid moment. But then they start laughing for real. And then everybody laughs. And then you walk away. Yeah. Right. Quick. You got to be quick. Like if you're just standing staring at them for a long time. And you don't say anything. It's creepy. 
you're not going to get it. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to get what yeah, you want. Yeah, 100%. I think so, making people laugh is, like, the best. When people are uncomfortable on camera and you laugh or, you know, you just start talking about your day or something like that or, or something that just happened. 100%. It gets them really natural, I guess. Yeah, and I, if I don't point the camera directly at their face, ever, like, it's it's so uncomfortable 100%. for everybody. Especially when you're so, having like a C200, like, like you got this huge thing. It looks like he's getting an interview for CNN or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. The small, ca- small cameras are clutch for that. Yeah. For sure. Small cameras are definitely clutch. And then like you said, the long lens, if you can stay from a distance then, but the problem with the stay from distance, sometimes you can't pick up like audio if you're trying to, uh, yeah, if you're I, tr- trying to get audio. I don't try to do, like, especially for events, I don't do as much audio. Yeah, as well, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then, yeah, when the only time you really want audio is when it's actually like a full planned production and, and, and stuff like that. But Yeah, uh, ceremonies and stuff like that, then it's like the most stressful thing of all time. Yeah, how is, like, I've never shot a wedding and I don't think I ever will because I don't think I want to deal with the stresses of a wedding, especially if you're that main guy that everything falls on you. Like, if you're, like, under your girlfriend or something like that for the first shoot, yeah. then it's a little less stress because like people will get mad at your girlfriend and, sh- and stuff like that. And then, you know, there's guaranteed you're probably not going to use your photos anyway. But like, how do you like, that's stressful, eh? It's, it's stressful. Like it's redundancies in place is a big thing. So say I shoot the ceremony, I'll have C200 with lav mics. I'll have a mic on one camera, a mic on the other camera and then something else because that audio is so important. Yeah. Oh, definitely. So last wedding I shot, I had a, this mic set up and it's got two labs that go into one receiver, but one lab just died in the middle of the ceremony. So I couldn't run up, couldn't change it. I couldn't do anything. And I could hear it happening in my, in my camera. And I'm like, Oh my God. I'm like, Oh my God. No. I'm like, I'm so, and it's outside too. So it's not like we can like, but luckily I had the redundant camera yeah. on my second shooter and he didn't even pick up the mic. He was just positioned in a lucky place to get the speaker. Oh my God. And it didn't like, feedback nothing i'm like oh my thank Dude. god like thank god this lucky placement and i had another camera too and it kind of got it but oh my god it's terrifying it's <laughs> those terrifying people don't understand how stressful situations like that can be um you know cor- corrupted have you ever had corrupted footage it's like you oh, get home and it's like god. all half of it's corrupted and like what do you tell the guy you're like well that's like the usr my girlfriend's like i hate i shoot with the r for weddings we do photography yeah. And it makes her like crazy because it's got one card slot. So she makes me shoot on small cards. Yeah. So I keep changing them. Cause I, have, I usually shoot on big cards, yeah. like larger cards. Yeah. She's like shooting the small cards cause I want you to keep switching them. Cause That's... if you're going to lose something, I don't want you to lose it all. I like, it's stressful, man. I got a little, I got a little uh, hard drive that you can just stick the card into it and it'll make a copy of it. But like at the same time, you're right. If it's not, if it, if both, if the file is corrupted, it's corrupted. It doesn't matter if you made a copy. Um, yeah. I haven't happened. It hasn't happened yet. I just hope it does. Let's just hope often. it doesn't happen. Keep making sure you're ejecting your cards properly. Yeah. And invest in good cards too. Yeah. If you, if you buy the cheapest card you can find, you're, you're going to get the cheapest card you can find. It was sucked because I was in Vancouver when I first started shooting. And I, this is my first time I've ever had a corrupted card. And I did a cliff jump with my GoPro. And of course, the second I'm about to go off the clip is when the file gets freaking corrupted. So I missed the whole jump. <laughs> and it was like, no. a, I think it was like a 10 foot GoPro first person no. jump. I was pissed. Oh. You gotta, you, just, you learn and, and you don't make the same mistake. Yeah. <laughs> well, my, GoPro's uh, hard too. my next question was going to be your favorite lens, but you answered the 35 millimeter, you said? 35 is my current favorite lens. It, I just bought a 7200, but the 35, I just love it. Do you, is that like a, a good versatile lens? Cause I've been thinking of, of getting a 35. If I'd have one lens on my camera, I think I'd have the 35. Really? Not even a zoom. You'd go with a... Just for C200 filming. I don't know. Cause it, the 16 to 35, I'm using that right now. I probably use it the most. And it's awesome. It's like... Oh, I tried that one actually. That one's really good. I use it all the time. It's such a good lens. Yeah, that's a good the, range right there. 16 and 35. For the mirrorless, I would do the 15 to 35. That's That lens is phenomenal. Yeah. But I don't want to buy two of the same lens. Wait, are you, you're, this is on the R, right? You're, you're, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I shoot all EF glass because oh, you don't I shoot, shoot mostly RF? on the C200. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, because you got to transfer it over. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. I don't like, but, like, it gets a little long though with certain lenses, don't you find? Oh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Especially with the little adapter and then, like, you got all that front heavy weight, but just. Of course, yeah, I did portraits yesterday or the day before. 
and I had the 7200 oh on there. God, it's after a scope. <laughs> it's a sniper scope right there. It's cool, though, because people love it. They're like, oh, my God, this lens is crazy. <laughs> It, it does. It looks crazy. The, and it's a very good lens, too. Yeah. Right? Like, the compression, especially at 200, must be insane. Oh, it's the best. And I, yeah. I always if tell people. get it. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, on my C200, I can get, like, the best footage, but it's, like, I'm holding, like, a weapon. <laughs> I'm holding it. It's, like, it's heavy, like, 20-pound thing. Yeah, have you? Yeah, I guess you got to get strong to hold those kind of cameras, because I haven't, like, with COVID and everything, uh, I haven't really been able to shoot that much, so I haven't shot. Mm. And especially, I just bought a... A steady cam, not a steady cam. I don't know, one brand of the steady stabilizer or whatever. And those things are heavy. So like how do like you just the handheld stabilizer, the steady cam? Your health? Yeah, the it's like a, the weights in the bottom? Yeah, the weights on the bottom, yeah. I is that it's it's called a steady cam, right? I forget. Yeah. So I've used an easy rig before for a wedding. Yeah. I've been, like it's you, people see you then, like you, you can't <laughs> but it, it helped me a lot. But the last wedding I shot, I just didn't feel it, and I decided not to. And like your yeah. back and your wrist is like a like full nine wedding hours day, of dude. Holding it. Oh my god. Oh my god. I couldn't. Well, I I could, but I don't know if I'd want to. Um, okay. The, you pay for it. The it last so. question. I asked everyone this question. I was going to ask you what your camera setup was right now, but we already talked about that. Do you have a dream setup that you want even more than C two hundred? Are you kind of like you're good where you are? Is there like a setup you've been Still eyeing. I'm sure there hasn't, but maybe. Oh, there always is. There yeah. always is. Uh, I would love a C500. I don't know the C500. What is C500? It? It's the same idea as a C200, but it's full frame. Shoots like 6K if you need it. It's just... Oh my God. It has like stabilization in it, which I shoot mostly handle, but it's got that little bit extra. Yeah. It's just a little bit better, but it's like triple the price. Uh, the other camera looking at is the C70 is what I would love as a second camera. Damn. Those are some big, but bo- this some big boy cameras. <laughs> <laughs> they're, not, they're not attainable at the moment, but how has ha- getting a second camera helped you? Do you think? Oh my god, the second camera is the best, especially for just usually by myself, right? So yeah, say you're shooting an interview, uh, C two hundred is my main camera. That's all the audio, does all the stuff, and the R is my second. You just jump back and forth. It looks so professional. Yeah. you can match it so easy. Yeah, I mean, especially I do photos with this all the time. Yeah. This I can fly on a gimbal. I mean, like, it's, as a second camera, it's, oh my God, it's like. I've been thinking of, like, I've been thinking of, of getting a second camera because I think, like, I don't know how much I'd use I would get it, but I think for certain situations you can. Interviews especially. Yeah. Like, if you want one overhead cam and one main cam, amazing. I mean, you got both. Yeah. And you can just cut back and forth. So, especially for interviews, because people make a lot of mistakes, like, you know, in an interview, people make the ums and the. Yeah. Those little things, you just cut those right out because then you cut the camera. Yeah. You cut the um, out, and then nobody notices, and it looks so professional. And it's just, it looks so good to me. Right? You put like a, oh my God. For me, it's funny. Like, I'm not a lot of people can relate, but for me, it's like when I'm shooting YouTube videos and I'm doing behind the scenes or something like that, and just having one camera and then having to use my phone as a second camera. So it's like I have super nice 1080 and then it switches over to like some crappy phone 1080 yeah. <laughs> you're like this doesn't seem well so just yeah, being able to have like a second camera would be nice and then the problem too sometimes is when you are shooting solo like if you're just shooting yourself and you're far you want to use uh the wi-fi on your phone yeah but you also want to get behind the scenes footage you're like i'm out oh of God. cameras <laughs> i can't have, i need more cameras <laughs> well the, the first reason i bought it was because there's just always just like in the back of your head. You're like, what if you had a shoot and camera A fails or something goes wrong, you forget something. Yeah. Then you have camera B. You know what I mean, there's, there'd be nothing worse than having a paying client showing up. Your main camera stops working for whatever reason and you have no backup. That's, you should be like, Casey, later. That's the fear like, of every single person. Like, <laughs> and the fear got to me. That's why I got the camera. But now <laughs> I can't see myself not having a second camera. All like tons of the work I do is always two cameras. Yeah. There's like, tons of it. So... I think there's a lot of things, there's a lot of different fears that you can easily solve through proper planning and through um, gear, which is the beauty because then you can, you're able to focus completely on the creative. So like, yeah, example, like if something gets corrupted, uh, you have a second SD card. If something, if first camera doesn't work, you have a second camera. Um, If you're scared, the person's going to tell you that you didn't get this shot. Well, you had a shot list. So there's just a lot of pre-planning that people can do. And, yeah, and, and, and the acknowledgement that you're going to make a mistake is a big one too. Yeah. Like, I make mistakes all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, I've done a million shoots, but I still make stupid mistakes sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's just it happens. 
Or we're not like perfect. It's going to happen. We're not perfect. You have to acknowledge it's going to happen. So have those redundancies in place yeah. or know how to fix it after yeah. or admit your mistakes. Yeah. Take the L. Like I remember yeah. once, I, I think it was when I first started to do music videos, I sent the wrong email for the e-transfer to a client. <laughs> So, oh, no. <laughs> so they sent money to the wrong email. I don't even know who they didn't. The it, money never went through, but you know, oh, thank God. just take the L and, uh, and, and go on. So, uh, that was pretty much the whole podcast. If you want to just let people know, uh, your future plans and then you can plug yourself, uh, website, Facebook, wherever you want people to check you out. Let the people know. Uh, I kind of just fly by the seat of my pants, future plans, <laughs> kind of take what comes my way. I say no a lot, but, uh, yeah. If you have nothing exciting, specific, I'll, that's I'll all good, it. man. Especially in a yeah. time right now, it's kind of hard to know exactly where, where everything is headed. Yeah, that's a, you know what I mean? I have some commercial stuff coming up, okay. but overall it's kind of just Yeah, no, I've seen I've seen you've been doing some cool yeah. stuff. I've seen some behind the scenes. I'm excited. I'm excited to see. Yeah. I have some videos that aren't out yet that I can't put out yet. And oh yeah, no, I've seen a lot of that. It's oh, like, gosh. oh, I'm shooting something, but no one can know. I'm like, okay. <laughs> that last one, like, I don't think I'll ever see a light of day because something went awry. Okay. Not on my end, but <laughs> well, we'll leave that one. We'll leave that one to the side. But yeah, uh, let people know where they can check you out. <laughs> yeah, so you can check out my Instagram at at Motion by Mike. Uh, same with Facebook, Motion by Mike, and then I have my website at motionbymike.com. Motion by Mike, sick. Love Motion by Mike. <laughs> Everyone, go check them out. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.